Welcome, Grade 11. In our previous session, I asked that you prepare and draw up a double bubble map um, to compare sole traders with partnerships as a form of ownership. Now, I'm going to go through this with you, and obviously your um, characteristics and points might not be in the same order as mine, as long as it is there somewhere, um, so that you can also make sense out of this. Um, this I see as a very good tool in order to know the different forms of ownership. We're basically just going to focus on the characteristics um, in this double bubble map. But if you know the characteristics well, then you can use that as a basis to argue about the benefits, the advantages and disadvantages. So we'll do this with all the different forms of ownership in order to then finally get the bigger picture. So hopefully you've um, realized that in the middle of this double bubble map, we need to identify all the characteristics that are the same for the sole trader as well as for the partnership. And then on the sides, we have the, the characteristics that are unique to that specific form of ownership. So let's start in the middle with the ones that are the same for both sole traders and partnerships. And most of this we've covered in grade 10 as well. So hopefully by now you know these um, already. So let's start there at the top. And as I said, yours might be somewhere towards the bottom and it might be worded slightly different. Um, so please, um, you are welcome to also ask me questions and, and, and um, give me your answers so that we can double check and learn from one another as well. Right, so let's start there at the top. So what are the same for both sole traders and partnerships? Firstly, you'll see at the bottom actually that we said that there's no um, um, legal documents required to um, um, start or establish a, a close uh, a sole trader as well as a partnership. But um, in, if you have a specific business and in a, um, a specific town there's maybe um, a local authority or a local municipality that has specific rules or regulations that you have to comply with, you still, as a sole trader or as a partnership, need to register with the local authorities or municipalities. So that would be the same for sole trader and partnership. In fact, it is the same for all forms of ownership, any type of business, if there's local rules and regulations, you have to register and abide um, by those. Then the next one, both sole traders and partnerships, or the partners of a partnership will contribute either own or borrowed capital. Own capital um, would be what the owner contributes um, in his or her personal capacity or the partners contribute in, the, contribute in their personal capacity. And borrowed capital would be when the business would go and apply for a loan at a bank or a financial institution. Just a side note, because you know I always like to bring uh, reality and real life into our discussions, is the fact that in many cases it is very difficult for a sole trader or a partnership or any business that doesn't have a legal personality or a legal entity to, especially when the business starts out, to apply for a loan at a bank or financial institution. It's just seen as a great risk. And secondly, with new businesses, there is no history for the bank to go on to see um, how well the finances have been managed in this specific business. So in most cases, Capital that's contributed is whatever the owner as a sole trader or the partners in their personal capacity have either saved or could get loans from their banks. But that will still be, if they bring it in the business, that will still be seen as own capital. Good. And then, you know, with other forms of ownership, there's specific requirements as to what the business name should end in um, or what should be visible on all um, documentation and so on. But with a partnership or a sole trader, there's no name restrictions or requirements that must be adhered to. Once again, a little bit of a side note, if you want to start your business one day, once again, for all forms of ownership, um, please make sure that you try and choose a unique name, firstly. And secondly, nowadays with all our social media um, um, 
platforms that we have that we can use to the benefit of our business first go and search do some facebook searches um internet searches um is a website um domain still available for the name that you want to um choose for your business how many facebook pages are there with the same name um, as your business it sometimes makes it very difficult um, for a business to be found if there's lots of businesses with the same name so that is just something uh, to keep in mind when when you start your business one day then um, we get to some very important stuff and that's one of the things that we use to distinguish between different forms of ownership and also that makes um, a specific form of ownership perhaps a better choice than another one um, if we look at the continuity of the business. Now, both a sole trading business as well as a partnership um, does not have continuity. Why? That brings me to the next one. Is It is because none of these forms of ownerships are um, legal entities. Now, what does that mean again? Hopefully you know it by now. That means the business and the owners can't be separated from one another. The, the owners are the business and the business are part of the owners. So the business cannot um, um, be seen as a separate entity on its own. Um, if the business wants to enter into a contract with another person or a business, the owner or the partners have to sign on behalf of the business. That means because these forms of ownerships, sole traders and partnerships, do not have legal entities, they are not separated from the owners, therefore the businesses do not have continuity. In theory, it means that say for example i have a, a sole trader business i'm the owner um, of a small business and i now want to retire or perhaps i die in theory the business has to close down because i cannot separate myself from the business i am the business we know in many cases that doesn't happen and um, it can be the business can maybe be transferred to somebody um in in the owner's will or it can be sold or whatever the case might be but in theory a business with no legal entity that's not separate from the owners does not have continuity so when the owner retires or dies or there's a change in the in in the um, ownership then the business technically has to close down um, before it can be taken over by somebody else right so we've we've covered that um, the sole trade as well as the partnerships do not have continuity can't continue without the owner and both these forms of ownerships are not legal entities so they can um, not enter into contracts on their own they need the signatures um, um, of the owners or the partners um, and that brings us um, to another point that we'll get to now now is liability um, of the business and the owners so the businesses these businesses are not legal entities they are not separate from the owners because these businesses the sole traders and partnerships are um, not a legal entity um, on their own therefore the business itself cannot apologies for that um, cannot um, pay tax as the business the the owner as a sole trader or the partners have to pay tax in their personal capacities because the law um, um, does not see the business as an actual legal person so both sole traders and partners will pay tax on the business profits in their personal capacity so let's say I'm a teacher, I get my, my teacher salary every month, I get taxed on my teacher salary, and um, that tax is paid over on a monthly basis to SARS, as pay as you earn, um, and I have another business that I do after hours. Um, and let's say that business makes 50,000 Rand profit for the year. In my personal capacity, as Mrs. Boyens, I will also have to pay tax on that 50,000. The business can't pay tax. I, as the owner, will have to pay tax on that profit. And the same will apply 
for partners. Partners will get their part of the profit um, at the end of the financial year, and they will be taxed in their personal capacity um, for the money or the, the profit that they got from the partnership. Right, and because none of these forms of ownerships are legal entities, this brings us to the next one. Therefore, and I want you perhaps to add that there's unlimited liability for the owners, not for the businesses, for the owners. So the sole trader's owner, the owner of a sole trader, trader business has unlimited liability for the debts of the business. What does that mean again? Say, for example, um, I run this business, it's my business, um, and I take out a loan from the bank for 100,000 Rand um, in order to expand the business. Something like COVID-19 happens um, and I have to close my business indefinitely. Let's say I'm in the event industry. I've got a, a, a wedding venue. We foresee that these businesses might only open in a year's time. How many of those businesses will eventually have to close down because they can't recover from, from um, um, such hardship? So say, for example, I took out a loan for 100,000 Rand to expand my business for my sole trading business. Because the business is not a legal entity, the business hasn't signed for that loan. I, as the owner of that business, in my personal capacity, I am responsible for, for, for um, the debt. So if the business cannot pay back the installment on the loan or can't pay back the loan completely, the bank will hold me personally responsible for the debt um, of the business for that 100,000 Rand. So what does it mean? If the business can't pay it, then the bank can legally claim, um, put in a claim against me personally. Um, they will... Um, um, force me to pay that money back. If I can't, they um, have the right to repossess my house or my car um, um, in order to, to recuperate that money. So that is um, what's um, important to know if you're in a sole trader business or if you're in a partnership that the owners um, have unlimited liability for the debts of the business. Now, that brings me to a little bit of a side point here with partnerships, that the partners are or have unlimited liability for the debts of the business. But something else is um, important to know here, that partners are jointly and severally liable for the debts of the business. Now, what does that mean? Let's say we are um, three partners, right? Um, and the, the one partner is, um, uh, who has considerable, considerably more wealth than the other two partners. Um, he's just, he just has more money. Something goes wrong. The business goes under, has a lot of debt. The creditors of the business have a choice. They can either hold all the partners responsible for the debt of this business to, to repay the debt um, of the business, or they can say, listen, we've done a little bit of homework and we can see that this partner actually has a lot of money and, and he will be able to, to repay the debt of the business. Then the creditors can hold the one partner responsible for all the debt of the business. So therefore, grade 11, it's also very important to choose your partners very wisely when you do enter into a partnership um, agreement and into a um, business um, with partners that you are sure that um, that well everything is above board um, and that you are perhaps uh, covered in a way that something like this can't happen but in reality because the business is not a legal entity the partners are jointly and severally liable for all the debt of the business. So um, um, something that could be a big disadvantage for this form of ownership. So just keep that in mind. And then um, at the bottom, you know that to, uh, we, when we um, um, spoke about um, public and private companies last year, we said that private companies do not have to publish their financial information, which in some cases can be a benefit for the business, whereas public companies, because they have shareholders, need to make the uh, financial um, information available to the public. Now, um, uh, 
can be beneficial and maybe um, can can have some disadvantages. But for sole traders and partnerships, um, the financial information is private. So obviously, the owner of a sole trader will will um, have uh, access to the business's information that's private to him. And then for the partners, all the partners will obviously have um, um, insight into the financial information, but it's not available to the public. So. That brings us back to all these middle bubbles. These are all the same characteristics um, that apply to both sole traders as well as partnerships. All right, so let's have a look at the, the um, unique characteristics of being a sole trader and then we'll move on to partnerships. First of all, the name of a sole trader, or what's the owner of a sole trader called? is called the owner. So there's no special um, name for, for the owner. Um, sole traders only have one owner. Um, it's also a sole trading business is owned and managed by the owner him or herself in most cases. Please remember it doesn't mean that there can only be one person working in the business. I've seen that quite a few times where people say there's only one person and that's the owner who works in the business. It might be if you have a very small business the owner can be the only person working there managing everything. It's him himself and that's it. But there's nothing that stops a sole owner or the owner of a sole trading business to appoint a manager or to appoint, appoint people working in this business. It might be quite a big business, but still owned by one person. Right. Then the nice part, the owner does get all the profits of the business because he's the only one um, that who's um, um, owning this business. The bad part is he's also responsible for all the losses. So there's nobody else to share with. The owner will have to um, make up for any losses that the business might have. Um, and that's something to keep in mind as well. And then as we briefly spoke about already, that there's no real formation documents. I mean, I can go to bed tonight, have this wonderful idea in a dream, and tomorrow morning I can start my business. But we need to keep in mind that if there are specific requirements of local municipalities or authorities, that we still as owners have to, business owners, have to abide by those rules. Um, and then I'm thinking like things um, like your um, a health certificate if you're working with food or maybe if you have a restaurant and you need to get a, um, a license to play music in your store and things like that. You have to, you have to make sure that you get the correct information before you open your business. Right, and then if we move over to partners, the owners of a partnership um, are obviously then called partners. Um, how many people are allowed to be in a partnership? Many years ago, we said two to 20, it has changed. There's no limit to the number of partners um, that, that can be, uh, that can form a partnership. But in most cases, normally partnerships are not that big because it's also quite difficult to manage a lot of people in such a form of ownership. So there can be 50, 100, 200, but normally it's, um, it's fairly small. And that's usually people with the, with the, um, same kind of business acumen um, um, in the same um, field, business field, that they tend to form partnerships um, and then to strengthen business that way. Then in many cases, the partners are managing the business because usually they've got a lot of expertise and, um, um, and they're quite strong, um, they've got quite strong skills and that will help them to manage the business. Um, on this point, I can say that we sometimes uh, also get um, a partnership where one of the partners or some of the partners are silent partners. So they are um, um, providing capital in order for this business um, to start and run and they share in the profits. Sometimes they, there's, a, there's a different arrangement, but they are not actively involved in the management of the business. This usually applies to people who maybe have quite a few different business interests and um, different businesses and they do not have the time or they don't feel like being part of the management of, of the partnership. And, and, and that can happen, that is a possibility. All right, and then um, profits or losses are shared according to the partnership agreement. So in many cases, it depends on how much money each of the partners are contributing into 
partnership, then they work on a, on a pro rata or a percentage basis. So I've put in so much money, so that would be my percentage of profit that I will get um, if the business makes a profit. Please just remember that the partners are also responsible for all the losses. So I will also be required to pay in money in that specific um, a partnership agreement or in that percentage um, agreement if the business has made a loss. So um, yes, the, the partners will have to then cover the losses um, according to their partnership agreement if the business makes a loss. Um, and then, as we said with the sole trader, there's no real formation documents required. There's, not, there's no legal document required for the formation of a partnership, but we say and we um, highly recommend that the partner, partners draw up a partnership agreement, have it in writing, black on white, so that if these um, disputes lies like on, which can happen, especially in partnerships, because there are lots of people um, with maybe um, different views and opinions working together, that um, you can refer back to the partnership agreement and use that as a, as a legal document. Um, if the partnership agreement has been drawn up and signed by all the partners, it can be used, for example, in a court case, um, in a court of law. Right, and great 11s, that's basically a recap on sole traders and partnerships. I hope this made a bit more sense um, and that you've now refreshed your memories um, and that we can use that as a basis to move on to why some forms of ownership are more beneficial in a specific situation than another one and that we can use these characteristics to also work out what are the advantages and disadvantages of these forms of ownership.